Hi everyone, I welcome you all in tutorial 7 of my eTape software training series. Till now, we are done with assigning loads onto our structure and we have also defined 6 load patterns that will be experienced by our structure for analysis and design. If you haven't watched my previous tutorials, don't worry, I will paste a link in video description so you can access to my previous tutorials. If you are new to my channel, please subscribe to it and press the bell icon so you can be notified on my next uploads. In this tutorial, I will discuss two topics. First is how to define the load combinations from our defined load patterns. And the second is how to assign meshing to the slabs. So first, let's understand why load combinations are used and what is the purpose of using load combinations. So building codes usually specify a variety of load combinations together with load factors for each load type in order to ensure the safety of the structure under different maximum expected loading scenarios. It is our responsibility as the structural engineers to design safe, serviceable structure. In order to do so, we must predict the magnitude of the various loads that are likely to be applied to the structure over its lifetime. In order to bring consistency to the prediction of loads, we have to refer standards that dedicate the loads and their probable combination that must be used in design. We must take care that these design loads and combinations is not necessarily comprehensive. There may come a time when in our professional judgment, we need to exceed the load values which are set in the standards. Now let's begin how load combinations are defined. So first refer the code book. So the ACI ASCE 716 has defined five basic load combinations for strength design. So we have to follow these and we uh, follow these equations and we have to generate uh, many load combination considering the load uh, patterns we have defined in our ETEPS model. So there are two ways to do it. Go to your ETEPS model. Click to the define menu. So here you will see load combinations. Click load combinations. There, there is add new combo. So click add new combo. You can name it according, accordingly. For example, the usual practices if you are generating load combination using first equation. So what will you do? 1.4 dead load so dead skill factor you have to give 1.4 click ok so we have successfully defined a load combination similarly if you want to add a new combination a refer code book so the second equation is 1.2 of dead load plus 1.6 of live load plus 0.5 of roof live load or snow load or rain load as I have not considered roof live load I have just added the default value of live load in all the slabs so I will use my up to these two mathematical terms so 1.2 of dead load plus 1.6 of live load so click a new combination name it 1.2 of dead load plus 1.6 of live load similarly combination type should be linear and dead load is 1.2 click add from here you change the load type click to live and 1.6 of live load click ok if you want to see the load combinations click and click modify so here we have successfully defined a combination with 1.2 skill factor of dead load and 1.6 skill factor of live load so this is the manual way to define the load combination there is also an other way to define load combination so in this dialog box you can see eight default design combos since we are using AS, A, 
CI318 welding code which uh, takes the, all the loads and loading criteria from ASC 716 so ETAB by default knows according to your load patterns what kind of load combinations should be so if you just click 8 default load combinations so a dialog box will appear so there will be 6 checklists and from this 6 checklist you have to choose 1 or 2 according to your design type for example if we are designing for concrete frame design so you have to check this dialog box so concrete frame design click ok so as you can see e tabs have defined almost I think 19 load combination based on our load patterns so let me remind you we have used 6 load patterns dead loads, live load, earthquake in x direction earthquake in y directions earthquake uh, wind load in x direction and wind load in y direction so if you open this combination default combination which is generated by e tabs so you will see 1.4 of dead load which is given in the basic equation of code book similarly if you open default combination 2 so it will be 1.2 of dead load and 1.6 of light load as i said earlier in our profession sometimes we have to increase the load factors uh, uh, which are given in our code book so i will recommend you you uh, define uh, combinations name it as my combo so where you increase the del load by 1.4 live load as 1.8 earthquake load x1 earthquake load in y direction is 1 wind load 1 and wind load in y direction is 1 you can also change these values so if you put a live ok make it 2 so this is my combination that means I will design a building using this combination which somehow overestimates the design but we will be on the safer side and this practice is recommended for the beginners who have just started their consultancy so it's better to go on safe side always so click ok I'm going to delete these two combinations because we will use the default combinations which are generated by e tabs for the design click ok so this is the simple way of defining the load combinations now let's move to our second topic and which we will assign the meshing to the slab now the question is why meshing is done so meshing is done to break a large element which is slab in our case into number of small elements to develop a precise correct and uniform load distribution pattern from slabs to beam this is very important to do during modeling of structure so there are two ways to do the meshing of slab number one is manual method and number second is auto meshing method in usual practice auto meshing method is widely adopted but first i will start from the manual meshing method and then we will switch to the auto meshing method now switch to the plan mode from here you can also refer to all the stories because almost our slabs are uniform in both stories uh, kept at the same places now to do the manual mesh first you have to select the object select the slab go to edit menu edit shells now you have to divide shells so from here you have to do now you have to divide into into a number of squares so for example if I want to divide into 10, uh, 10 pieces in x direction and 12 pieces in y direction so I will just put 10 into 12 click ok 
So in this way we have to divide the shell objects into number of squares. Now from here we have to also divide this lab into number of square pieces following the same continuity for this what we have to do we have to select this object and also select these points go to edit menu click edit shields divide shields so from this option we have to choose selected joint objects on edges click ok as you can see the line is in a continuous manner now you have to divide these shields in y direction into number of squares for example i am going to divide it into five squares go to edit menu edit shields divide shell now you have to choose this option so i don't want any this uh, division in x direction so i will put one so i want five divisions in y direction put 5 and click ok now similarly select these corners and the following shield go to edit menu or choose all these shields edit shields similarly 1 by 5 click ok So in this way we have to divide the shell objects into a number of squares following that following the continuity of the slabs because the load will be transferred from this slab and this slab. In this way we have to divide the shells. So this is the manual method of meshing the slabs. Now we will move to the auto meshing method. So for auto meshing method, what you have to do, you have to select all the slips, go to assign menu, shell, from shell, you have to choose floor auto mesh options. Okay. So if you don't mesh, if you forget to mesh and if you run the analysis ETABS by default uh, will divide this lab into number of uh, square sections. So it's better you always do it by yourself. So now you have to click auto cookie cut object from structural elements. So mesh at visible grids. No, I don't want to mesh at the visible grids. So further mesh we need it to the maximum element size you have to check this option reduce this size make it 24 and click apply so if you want to see the meshing go to set display option from here you check shell analysis mesh and click ok So as you can see, the meshing has been done automatically for all the slabs. So guys, this brings to the end of today's tutorial. If you find this tutorial useful, please do like and share. If you have any doubt, you can comment in comment section. For upcoming tutorial videos, please do subscribe my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon so you can be notified on my next uploads. Thank you and have a nice day.